Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Rafu Shalema, the complete and speed recovery of Rav Amita Ben Shoshana and Shaul Ben Brita. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yechmila Daniel Ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Parsha Perspective is dedicated in loving memory of my dear Aunt Lynn, Leah Mincha Bas Yaakov Yosef. She returned her soul to her Maker this past week, and may her soul be uplifted to the highest of heights, and may her memory be a blessing for our family. This week's Parsha Perspective is dedicated in loving memory of Yosef Ben Zaev's wolf, whose yard site is tomorrow, the 8th of Kislev. May his neshama have an aliyah, and may his memory be a blessing for his entire family. This week's Torah portion is Parsha's Vayetze, Close to God. Our Parsha begins with Yaakov Avinu fleeing Be'er Sheva to escape his brothers, to escape Esav's anger and rage. On his way to Haran, he rested overnight in the future home of the Basin Mikdash of the Temple in Har Hamaria, the Temple Mount known today. He dreamt of a ladder reaching the heavens with angels ascending and descending it. God then appeared to Yaakov and told him that he would give the very land he was sleeping on to his children and guard Yaakov Avinu until he returned to the land of Canaan. The following morning, Yaakov woke up and recognized this mountain's holiness and named the base Kel the house of God. When Yaakov arrived in Charan, he saw Rachel, Lavan's youngest daughter and cousin, by the city well with her father's sheep. But a large rock blocked access to the well's opening. So Yaakov single-handedly rolled off the massive stone that sat on top of the well and gave water to the sheep. Rachel ran home to her father and told him that his nephew had come to town, and Lavan went out of his house to greet Yaakov and invited him to stay at his home. Lavan also offered him a job of tending to his sheep and asked him what he would like as payment. Yaakov answered that he wished to marry the youngest daughter, Rachel. Lavan replied that he must work seven years in exchange for her hand in marriage. After seven years of work, Lavan arranged a marriage but switched his daughters, giving Leah instead of Rachel. The following morning, Yaakov realized what had happened, but it was already too late. So he worked another seven years to marry Rachel. Our Parsha has the births of 11 of the 12 tribes of Israel. Leah gave birth to Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, and Zevulun. Zilpah, Leah's maidservant, gave birth to God and Usher. Rachel gave birth to Yosef, and her maidservant, Bila, gave birth to Dun and Naphtali. I just returned from an amazing and uplifting trip to Eretz Yisrael to Israel, and this Parsha perspective is a direct reflection of my experience there. A question comes to mind from the Parsha. The Kabbalah explains that the vision that Yaakov Avinu had of the angels ascending and descending the ladder was no small matter. In fact, it is one of our tradition's most revealing and expressive revelations and visions. But we do not find a similar level of vision to either Avram Avinu or Yitzchak Avinu. Why did God reveal Himself to Yaakov Avinu in such a direct and open manner? The Das Zekinim, a commentary by a collection of rabbis from France and Germany, gives a very interesting explanation. They write that God revealed himself in such an open manner because Yaakov was going to fulfill God's promise to Avraham and to Yitzchak. Hashem swore multiple times to Avraham Avinu and to Yitzchak Avinu that their descendants would amount to the stars of the sky and the sand at the beach. Yet that oath has not been fulfilled. Both Avram and Yitzchak only had one son who would continue their legacies. But God had a different plan for Yaakov Avinu. He would have many sons and finally begin to fulfill God's promise to Avram Avinu and to Yitzchak Avinu. However, the Rabbeinu Bachaya of Bachya bin Usher gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that God appears to Yaakov in a revealed manner to ease his transition and solidify his confidence. The Rabbeinu Bachai explains that Avram and Yitzchak sacrificed in their youth to justify God's openness with them. Avraham recognized that there must be God at just three years old and challenged all those around him to believe in the one God. Yitzchak was the first to be circumcised at eight days old, purifying him from that moment on. But his main sacrifice was going willingly with his father to be an offering to God at the Akedah. But Yaakov seemingly had no acts of sacrifice, no great demonstrations of belief, no real reason for God to be candid and open with him. Yet for that precise reason, 
God demonstrated and showed Yaakov Avinu that he would be with him until he would return to the land of Canaan, to the land of Israel. The Pasuk details this vision vividly. The Yine Hashem needs of Allah and God was standing over him. Va'amar ani Hashem alekei Avram avicha velekei Yitzchak. I am the Lord your God and I'm the God of Avram your forefather and your father Yitzchak. Va'aretz asher atashecha Allah lecha etin lezarecha. The land and the ground which you are lying on, I will give to you and your descendants. Vahayazaracha, ka'afar aretz, and your descendants shall be like the dust of the earth. Uparasta yama vakain matzafana venegba, vinibuchu bach, kol mishbachoisa adama uvizarecha. And they shall spread out to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south, and all the families of the world shall be blessed by you and your descendants. Vihine anoichi imach, ushmarticha bachol asher telech, veshivisicha el adama azois, kiloyaz vecha, ad asher yasisi ace asher dibelach. Remember that I am with you. I will protect you. Wherever you go, I will bring you back to this land, and I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. The Kabbalah explains that as the angels were ascending and descending the ladder, there was a moment where it seemed like Yaakov was alone. But that cannot be further from the truth. God was standing over and protecting Yaakov as the angels got positioned. The reason for God's candidness is to teach Yaakov and all his future descendants that his relationship with them is not dependent on their actions. Although it can seem that God is, heaven forbid, distant from us, that is a far cry from reality. If we just open up our eyes, we will see his guiding hand dictating our every move. If we open up our hearts, we will enter the loving embrace of our Creator, of our Maker, of our Father in Heaven. It may be difficult, but no action can prevent us from feeling God's love and desire. Every single person can experience this connection and enter the caring and warm embrace of our Father in Heaven. This profound and fundamental lesson is so relevant in our day and age. We live in a fast-paced society with an ever-evolving culture experiencing the entire world on an individual scale. And this may lead and push us from recognizing God as our sole provider of life, meaning, and purpose. But that does not deter God from keeping His promise and fulfilling His pledge to Yaakov. The ground on which you lie I will give to your descendants. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. There is a powerful quote from Rabbi Lord Sachs about Yaakov Avinu. If you ever find yourself struggling with faith, you are in the company of Yaakov, who became Yisrael, the father of faith in all of us. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.